Welcome everyone to the Welcome. HyperX OC takeover here in Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, we just started the live. I'm a Truthman from Overclocking TV and this is Xiala from Overclocking TV. Hi guys. Uh, we will be commenting today the competitions and so far this competition is organized by um, Kingston. Yes. Cooler Master. Yes. Uh, Intel and Sapphire. Yes. Actually, and it's yes. all organized by Kingston, and uh, and the other people are the the partners for this event. So, what do you expect from this competition, Tim? Well, do you want to tell more about this competition? What's going on today? Okay, so today we are in Taipei. I think it's always good to remind to everyone. To remind that, right? <laughs> so we are in Taipei. We are still at Computex. And um, so Kingston uh, booked the venue at the top of one of uh, of one building. It's literally on the roof of that building, and that building yep. is pretty awesome because it has a concert hall on the rooftop. And Indeed. Well, of course it's covered. So luckily, thank, since it's raining today, we don't have any rain, right? <laughs> um, so you have to imagine they 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 build this this huge stage. Uh, th those of you that I actually probably saw the picture I posted yesterday when they were still constructing it um, so they built this huge stage stage where they're where they're going to host a gaming competition uh, I'm, I'm not sure actually what game it's going to be I'm, I didn't really follow that part we were more but like concerned about the overclocking part rather than the gaming part yeah but I think it should be something quite epic I mean it really looks massive so and the overclocking uh, competition is on the side of this so um, I would say next to the stage, almost. Almost next to the stage, indeed. And uh, so there will be te 10 teams today. Uh, they're all competing on three benchmarks. So there's uh, SuperPy 32M, uh, uh, Max Memory Max Clock. Max Memory Clock, of course, because it's uh, the yes. HyperX event. So and Intel XTU. And Intel XTU. Actually, the funny thing is the Intel XTU will be on the uh, special Pentium anniversary CPU. Yeah. So that CPU is the, a special dual I actually, core. I actually find that pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's nice. I, I didn't expect that kind of CPU to be used for for the uh, for the convention today, yeah. and that's actually quite interesting. So basically, that's a Pentium uh, CPU with uh, two core only, no hyper trading, uh, nothing. It's really like low end hardware, but you can overclock. So that's actually uh, gonna be very interesting to, uh, to yeah. do that. So, so who, are, huh? who, who are the teams? Who are right. the teams for this competition? So, I said 10 teams, right? So, um, uh, like for the Intel event that happened uh, a few days ago, uh, this event as well as uh, as teams that represent OEM, um, so motherboard vendors. So, of course, Gigabyte is represented. You have uh, MSI, um, you have SROC, you have ASUS. So, yeah, you have, you have those motherboard vendors teams, and then you have other teams that qualify. That qualify online through yes. SWBOT over the, the past few months. That's it. So in those teams we have uh, Team Denmark, there's Team AU from Australia of course. As always. Yes, Jagat Review from Indonesia. And uh, United Overclockers. And that's United Overclockers is more like a, a mix of a few overclockers. Yeah, from, yeah. But not really uh, one country only. Yeah, it reminds me actually that there's a pro C team called United Overclockers. Indeed. Uh, and there's although Team China yeah. and Team OSA UK Pro. That's it. That is the same. Uh, actually, that's the team, the one man team. Yeah, that's OSA APAC. That's APAC, uh, yeah. So so far, who are, who are each person in the right. in, in the in the team? So who is in Team Gigabyte? So Team Gigabyte, we have High Cookie, which is a in-house master overclocker at Gigabyte. That actually is one of the the guy that did develop the uh, the, the latest OC board, the LN2 board, yeah, the, the, LN2 the special yeah. LN2 board. And you have also Sophos, which is um, a Greek dude that joined Gigabyte now two months ago. Two, uh, almost, it, it told yeah. me like a bit more than two months ago. Right? Yeah, so and he started working with High Cookie here in Taipei, uh, doing R&D on the boards and that kind of stuff. So also mm. professional overclock as well, yes. Yeah, indeed. Um, that's funny because the the team Team AU is not is on the like just in front of them also. Yeah. And they, they, they used to bench together here at the Computex mm. at the Gigabyte booth so that's gonna be funny to see like two different teams competing yeah. against each other for this event while all the other all the Usually other time this together, week, yes. Yeah, they, they while don't... the other time this week they're gonna be all over clicking together. Yeah, so Team AU this time is represented by Sniper Us and uh, JJJC. That so is actually the latest uh, member that joined the Team AU. Yes. I'm right. So then we go, we can move on to the MSI team and MSI team is the two uh, people that 
are pushing MSI board yeah. for for a while now in the overclocking scene. So you have Pepino, which is uh, Pepino is a MSI friend's employee. In C indeed, he used to be yes. the, uh, one of the actually he used to be one of the best overclocker in France, and he's now working at MSI. Yeah, and also PT1T, which is I guess pretty famous in the scene for uh, all his jokes. Uh, yeah, he's always really funny and everything. So this guy is from Belgium, I, w I should say, of course, and <laughs> and yeah, and so PD1T and Pepino both speak French because uh, PD1T is from the the French side, the of French Pepino. part of, uh, so, of Belgium, right? Yeah, so I mean, this is going to be an interesting team to watch. Yeah, there's also Team Brazil by Joe 9BR. Joe 9BR was actually in the amateur competitions and the at yes. the at the Intel event. So that's funny to have like the. Someone, an overclocker that was in the amateur competition at one event and then is yeah. uh, against all the others at the same level the, like two days after. So that would be quite interesting so to see how we, that's... We can even that's say he leveled up. He became <laughs> yeah. amateur, now he's pro. He's in two days, that's not, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's how good he is. <laughs> Team Denmark, it's uh, Riska and Zulio. Yeah, so uh, I think Zulio is Zizolio or I'm not quite sure how we pronounce his nickname. But what is interesting to say about this team is that Zolio, he competed in the MOA last year. Uh, he didn't want MOA, but he competed and it was his first major competition. Uh, I think Zolio is probably among the, um, yeah, I would say the, the top guys in Denmark right now. And, uh, and yeah. he, he's always around. I mean, he, he was. Uh, he's not officially overclocking with the uh, with Gigabyte uh, at the at the 101 booth during Computex, Ooh. but he was there with the other with the guys with Ike Cookies, of course, the Team AU guy. Yeah. He was there like helping them, doing some stuff with them. So yeah. you can see that these these guys are are dedicated to that. And even if they want, if they come here to, yeah. to pay, pay pay for their flight or get flew here, it's they, they still enjoy like sharing the the settings. And, and, but it's also pretty cool. They uh, they rented out a place in Taipei for Computex. So all those guys from uh, from Denmark and uh, other places like their Bauer from Germany, they're, they're all in the That's same right. same place, and they called it the bench house. The bench house. They're not <laughs> benching there. Well, maybe they were benching a little bit yesterday to prepare, but. Yes, I heard some problems. They had some issues with their AC at some point. I think the landlord <laughs> is probably not that happy anymore. <laughs> so let's move on to Team China. Team China is composed by Hero and D4Dot. Yes. Uh, these two guys are actually, um, they did compete quite a few times for live competitions. Yeah. I, I think that was MOA. MOA, uh, those are the guys we saw also at the Galaxy uh, GOC even in Shanghai. Also. Uh, D4Dog was not competing, but he was there, and uh, Hero Hero was competing with uh, Hassan, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about Hassan, and then moving on to Indonesia. Yes. Indonesia, our friends that are actually right in front of us. Uh, that will be Lucky Noob and Slit. Yes. The yeah. funny thing is, Lucky Noob says, "Oh, I'm just the assistant today. I'm just the assistant." Yeah. And he says, "Oh, yeah, my friend is here, so he will be doing all the work, and I will just like." Poor LN2 mount the system and that's it. So yeah. that would be actually quite uh, quite fun to see. Yeah, uh, those guys are pretty good. Yeah, and uh, Slit is quite, I guess, uh, quite quite new in the mm. in the scene of competitive overclocking in terms of live competition. But they have a, a huge scene of uh, amateurs and enthusiasts in, in Indonesia. Indonesia and, and Lucky is the guy behind uh, that is driving this whole community. He's organizing workshops all the time. They have this huge competition they hold every year. The amateur one? Uh, uh, yeah, it's an amateur and they have also a pro side and it takes place in the, the Indonesian version of Computex, if you if you say so. And they, they do that in partnership with uh, Intel, they have Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, all those brands together. And every day there's a competition on a different vendor. That, that's, so that's pretty that's cool, nice. yes. Yeah, they're, they're putting some very nice events. Uh, that's that's funny. We will come back to the the complete hardware a bit later today. But you have to understood that to understand that Lekinim was like, well, we don't expect anything today, for the main reason that everyone can bring his own CPU for at some point. And they were like, oh, we didn't have any good CPU, so we don't bring. Did you, we didn't bring any? Yeah. Oh, we didn't have good uh, Kingston HyperX memory kit, so we didn't bring any. So they will basically have like a CPU from Kingston and memory kit from Kingston and they will do whatever they can. I'm, I'm sure they will do okay. I'm sure they will do okay. Actually, that will be interesting because the XTU score with the Pentium Anniversary Edition, yeah. that will be uh, everyone up the same. Uh, GB Marmot, one of the organizers uh, working at Kingston, 
was going around with two plates of full of CPUs so people can choose which CPU they want. So that's actually a complete lucky draw for that. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. And uh, usually, you know, the, the, the guys that will say, yeah, I didn't prepare and, uh, you know, they did. <laughs> of course they did prepare. Of course they looked up how to do the, all, all do, like, yeah, you know, like, hey, so what do you, how do you do this thing? And, like, you know, there, there's <laughs> always some kind of preparation, yes. Indeed. So the last three teams are OC, OC UK Pro, and as, I, as we told you, it's only formed by Edbike. Uh, although Ace Rock team is Splave and uh, John Lamb, so yeah. as the, that's actually the same part of the same team that was at the Intel event two days, uh, exactly, two days ago. Yes. And the latest one is the United Overclockers, the one-man team by Extreme Addicts. And actually, Extreme this, Addicts. This guys need a team for, for himself. Yes. He, actually, the only teammate he needs is the beer. He's yes. all, always like this, always around with uh, I think I think th this week I haven't seen him yet drink any drop of water. <laughs> I don't think he knows I, what I it is. I can't remember that either. For that I, I know there's 50% water in beer, but you know, sometimes it's good to just have the water and not the beer. But yeah, <laughs> this guy, this guy, I mean like, yes. He, he's a he's a very impressive overclocker. He won them all. Uh, he won actually some he won all yeah. the competition last year. All uh, the live last year was the all win. He won also the, what is important to mention. He won the the HyperX competition at CES. Also. So yeah, I mean like this guy is probably one of the top challengers today. He knows exactly what he's doing. He always says he's not prepared, but that's not true because he's winning every time. So he always say I I I didn't prepare and I didn't slip. So yeah. we will see how that turn out today. Yeah, that's right. So that's it for all the teams. But what are the hardware? What are the few settings we can use, and how that's gonna uh, gonna run along? Yes. So we will we will come back uh, after a short break. So we will uh, have all the information for you guys. Yeah. And actually, the competition is already started, and there is a bit more than four hour and twenty three minutes to go in these competitions. So stay around, we're gonna get, take a short break and come back a bit in a bit later. Yep, see you later.
On a plus de temps, il reste 5 minutes. On commence à. On n'a pas dit, on n'a pas dit. On n'a pas dit quoi
This program deals with themes of an adult nature and is intended for a mature audience. Welcome back! Hey guys! So, I just went out to the, uh, to the Gigabyte and Team AU team. So, basically, oh yeah. So, I just came back from the Team AU and Gigabyte team. Yeah. So, so, let's say it. Gigabyte already broke the world record. Yes, we know. Yes. They submitted a 4 4 mark. It's called not so long ago. And they actually did prepare everything uh, before to do that. The funny thing is, they did the memory world record on the SOC Force LN2, but they will be using the SOC Force for the rest of the competitions. The main reason is, according to Dino, the uh, SOC Force is uh, better, uh, a better BIOS for, um, for tuning the Samsung ICs. And as the, uh, the HyperX memory kit they are using are based on, the, on Samsung ICs, uh, they will be using the SOC Force for that. So actually, Team AU and Team Gigabyte are using the S to the V97X SOC Force. Yep, that's right. And they're not using the LN2 edition. And they're not they're using not, the not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I mean, they did buy. It. Yeah. What's gonna be interesting is the the XTU score with the Pentium Special Anniversary Edition CPU. And that CPU is already at 5.6 GHz with GGGC. Yep. And that's actually 
insane. They, they, they boot up the systems like, okay, 5.2, yeah. okay, okay, 5.4, and done. And right when I was leaving, they were booting at 5.8. Yeah. <laughs> so, so right now, those guys have a 404 not found. 404 not found, score not found. <laughs> Four. 404 marks for Intel XTU on the Intel Pentium Anniversary Edition. Yeah. So right right after them, the MSI team has a 392. So they're not that far. I mean, like, yeah, they have been. They're, it's, no, it's, it's quite close. It's I mean, all the scores would be quite close because yeah. it's uh, like the low end, so it's not for the performances by itself. Yeah. But I think like a lot of the guys will uh, will be having uh, so yeah. much fun with that. About the the cold bug and the temperature, I know that some people were asking. They are, the Team AU team is actually running at minus 120 degrees on the CPU while benching XCU. So, so far seems okay-ish, like seems the same as uh, uh, see it to be most a, of the Intel CPUs, yeah, right? It's not, that, it's not that problematic for the moment, it seems, so, which is a good thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good for everyone. Yeah. So, what other scores do we have and well, we can speak It of? seems Jagat Review submitted a, a next use of, uh, the next use score. So 332 marks. So I guess yeah, that's their. It's probably their, I think not their first run, but it's it's their first submission in the competition so far. Yeah. So and that's actually quite funny there. because they they came here like oh, Lucky Noob says I'm gonna be the assistant and yeah, well, he's, actu he's actually I mean, like, not the assistant at all. He's actually right benching. right now he's on the keyboard. He's he's pr he is pretty much in control. Yes. Yeah, you can see him in the in the bottom of the screen. His, uh, his teammate is actually <laughs> sitting on the couch, <laughs> sitting, on, <laughs> sitting down and taking it easy, and <laughs> yeah, and so forth. So, so if you have, um, if you want to follow live the scores, I mean, like maybe you're at work or something like that, just just check on the, on Twitter hwbot uh, esports. So l l search for it. It's called hwbot esports, and there you have live updates with a link to the submissions on hwbot. And yeah, as soon as there's a score added, you will get a, if you click, a, I think, favorite on your, uh, for example, Twitter app on your phone, up it will pop up and you will know. Yeah, this, this, yeah. This you will get the, uh, the, 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 live, the live things at the time, the, the live updates. That's it. Um, there's one thing that some people say is, oh, that XU score are not great. Yes, of course, it's not, it's not the, it's the CPU. It's, it's normal. It's normal. Like, it's, the, it's not Core i7, right? It's not a Core i7, it's not a Core i5, it's not even a Core i3. No. It's a Pentium Anniversary Edition and that CPU is just a dual core CPU. There is no hyper trading, yeah. there is no uh, special features on it, there is no virtualization features on it. There's it, 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 is a, it is a chip that Intel came out with for, for the anniversary and, it, it, and I think this chip is go it's mainly going to be used a lot by overclockers. Actually, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's already taking 5.8 yes. gigahertz under XTU, so that, that's sure. Like, um, I mean, like seriously, I don't know. I know nobody that will not go by five at least. At least, at least. They're supposed to be. They're supposed to be launched mid June, so that should be about next week. Uh, as we're in Taiwan, usually we can get the CPU a bit in advance. Yeah, maybe unofficially, can, of course. Well, you can always find you know those stores. If you ask one time, they say no. You ask second time, oh okay. <laughs> How many do you want? <laughs> How many of them do you want? So we are pretty sure that some of the overclockers that are here attending the Computex will uh, uh, buy this kind of CPU before well, going back home. You know, you know what? There's some people that tell me they're staying a few days more. It's not just to stay for the parties or for the nice weather. They're, they're staying so they can actually buy the chips here. Actually, the the, the official name of this uh, of the CPU is the, the G thirty two fifty eight. Yes. So if you are looking uh, in the shop, then like in a few weeks from now. Well, look up that chip. It's pretty cheap, so it's uh, that chip is pretty cheap. It's below, be, below eighty. It's below eighty bucks. It's, yes. it's below eighty dollars. So that's gonna be about uh, 70, 60 to seventy euros in Europe. Yeah, and um, it clocks very well. It's and a, I think it's a perfect chip for starting overclocking. If you if you're afraid of breaking something, well, get that chip, mount it in your system, just try it out, and then once you're used to it, switch Core Five, Core Seven. But that, that's the thing, the, most of the person, the people that will buy these kind of CPUs don't buy it for the performances. Oh, they no, just no, no. buy it to overclock. Yeah, and you can overclock that CPU because uh, on the, uh, on the uh, 8 series and 9 series of the, like the LGA 1150 uh, socket, 
most of the CPUs were locked. You need a case queue, like a, a, a CPU ending the, the number with the, with the K yeah. to be able to overclock that. Um, There's and a, everything other, below yeah. could not be overclocked. It's locked. It's locked at some point. You cannot uh, modify the multiplier. There is yeah, uh, memory settings that you, can you cannot do modify. Those chips, yeah, not allowed for that. Yeah. So that's why Intel made one. They made like a, a very extremely cheap CPU that you can overclock. There is no big performances out of that. But who cares? You just do that for the clocking, yeah, for the yeah, fun. Yeah. And come on, that's 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 easy to play with. That that's good for for it, everyone. It is perfect for playing with. Yes. So. Um, the competition now is, uh, I think it's about an hour almost it's running. It's, it was five, it's been an hour now. A, an yep. hour, yes. So there's three hours, 58 minutes. Uh, so 10 teams competing. There's about five, six, seven, eight scores submitted. Actually, let's, the so, score didn't change since the last, uh, yeah, since the mean, last update we did. Yes, I think like so maybe we can just like take another break and let you... Have a look, watch the teams, and we'll come back in a few, uh, maybe in 10, 10, 15 minutes. And we'll sure. probably have some more stuff to discuss by then. And then because all of the guys were actually uh, finishing, setting up, and, uh, and preparing the hardware, and benching, and benching. Yeah. We will see what of the what these guys will be doing. That would be you know, nice to see. It will be interesting, yes. So oh, 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 no, there's an, there's an update, though. The Team AUXCU has oh. is to 424 now. Oh, yes. So that might be the XU score running at... 5.8 gigahertz. Well, can we check? Uh, can I we don't know the, if I check on the URL, it doesn't give me the, the, the frequency. We don't have the, the screenshots. No, we don't have the screenshot yet. We need to we need to go by, ask them what was the frequency. Yeah, so so let's just take a break, do that, ask them where they are, and we'll come back update you in a few minutes. And during the break, don't forget to ask us any question on the Twitch live. That would be very uh, we'll be very keen to answer all that. We'll maybe take some um, weird requests. As long as it's not eating seafood. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't touch seafood. Because our stomach got pretty much in pain yeah. being here in Asia. But the the but problem is not it's not it's not the seafood. It's the um, it's how how we call how we are called that. It's the Computex syndrome. It's like the, the, the syndrome where you have more more beer in your system than sleep. Uh, like you were yeah, saying. Yeah, the, the amount of lit <laughs> the, the total liter of beer you have in your system or during the week is more than the total hours of sleep you have. Yes. Oh, and then you, you get sick from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so let's switch back to them and see you guys in a few minutes. And the human race is filled with Secure the target by expandable leg bands. Out of sight, that cave. They came in a, a spaceship of some sort. Whatever those people told you they saw last night. How is it you are able to leave the planet? We 
our teacher locked us in and we weren't allowed to do anything until we were told. She just said to stay calm and stuff. We have an accident or something. But there was two kids that uh, were out going to the bathroom and they came running back and said somebody, two people got shot. Inside this room, all of my dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams, become dreams, become dreams, become dreams, become dreams. Become dreams.
Welcome back everyone. Woo! That, that is actually quite noisy here because they just are launching the big event here, the Hyperx, uh, the Hyperx event here doing Computex. Yeah, so they're just starting their gaming event. So, oh, here's Adeline. <laughs> so, there's gonna be, uh, actually at the event, there's the overclocking event and there will be, if you can watch in the back, on the stage, they will have two over, true po two pro gaming teams competing today to win something. We don't know exactly. Uh, I think it's probably money. I think <laughs> because there is money in the overclocking thing, so they might have yes, some yes. quite a lot of money involved for the gaming things again. Yeah, it will be actually interesting to uh, to see how much they're, they're getting. Yeah, right. So don't forget, we are here at the King, uh, Kingston Ibrix OC Takeover event. The overclocking competition is about to uh, award 10,000 US in the cash prize. Yes, so there is uh, 2,500 US for the first place, 2,000 for the second, 1,000 for the third one, and uh, 750 for the fourth one, and 500 for the fifth one. Indeed, and actually it's a, it's a, a cash prize per benchmark, so the benchmark, if you run the, the first place for the memory clock will get $2,000. $2, the Super by 32M first person will get a hundred, yeah. uh, fifteen hundred dollars, and the first core on XTU will get a thousand dollars also. Yeah. For the second place uh, memory clock, you will get a fifteen hundred dollar Super by uh, one thousand XTU 750, and if you are the third place in memory clock, you will get a thousand dollar. And then Super Pi 32M 750 and XU is 500. So I guess uh, if you guys want to check more about the scores and all that stuff uh, in terms of pricing, how it is distributed, I have more information about, I mean like written background information about the event. Yeah. With the screenshot is better, yes. So now we have, uh, indeed there's the screenshot that are available. He, he, Peter on knows about that, he, he's looking into it. No problem. They're gonna so the, the, the screenshot will be soon available on the HWBot uh, page where the scoreboard is actually. 
Um, was there any big change in the past 10 minutes uh, in the, this board? The, the Australian guys um, improved their XGU score. So it's it's which I think it was 424 before we left. It was 404 then 424 and, and now, then it's, now it's 430. 30. Yeah, so it's it's getting interesting. Like it's getting somewhere. And, and, and if you start looking, it's not just getting somewhere. It's actually making it right now a difference with the other teams. I mean, nowadays about. 40 points almost difference with the the second best XTU score. Indeed. So I mean like yeah, it starts to be like oh okay, that's not just a small step. It's not like a tiny inch of frequency missing or something, right? So no, that would be that would be actually uh, that would be interesting to see what the uh, the guys will be doing. We are seeing the Kenubis uh, being worried. Kind of worried. It's like, it's like I, I, I don't know, my friend. I don't know. There is uh, there is some issue. I don't uh, understand. Actually, uh, we try to use the Asus board, and somehow okay. the Asus board is very flaky with the battery. We are using the Asus so board, and I had have to some switch to MSI, but I don't know how to switch. Uh, so he board, decided so. to switch to MSI to try something different. So uh, yeah, right. They, they started first, and they they were using the uh, one of the Asus board. I can't remember. I think that was the Gene, the Maximus Seven Gene, and they uh, they were having some. Some issues, and they are now switching back to the MSI board. Actually, the Kenobis have been using MSI board quite uh, for quite yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, they have yeah. been performing quite well in uh, the latest MOA also. Maybe he's gonna be more comfortable to push a few things. He knows how they work on MSI and all of that. Yeah, so just true. when you always switch motherboard, and you should not really have tried like BIOSes and stuff. This and what? even between different different mainboards, sometimes the, the the memory, the tweaking of the yes, memory yes. is a bit different. So yeah, you always yeah, have yeah. to adapt. To the kind of hardware you are using. using. That's actually why uh, most of the top guys usually use the same brand. Well, they end up sticking to a brand not just because they uh, they like the brand, right? They, they just like the overclocking style of the boards. They, they like the, the they, feeling of overclocking. Yeah, that's on that it. Board. It's like it's just the, the features and the way it works. They're just, yeah, for them it feels more right or righter than the, <laughs> more right than the other. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> better than the other boards, right? So then it gets interesting to see uh, actually when you go live and you have to compete on a different brand. If you are capable to actually manage to perform as well in a very similar situation, like um, yeah. if you can tr troubleshoot stuff faster. Indeed. Um, we want to come back a bit about the, the, what this event is all about. So this is the final of the HyperX OC takeover, the HOT. But it is a final, but it's, it is also a kick-off event. So, let me explain. I mean, seriously, they, they, there's been like a several hyperx events, right? And Peter is looking at me. Peter, have you fixed your screenshots bug? Almost. Almost. Yes, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> so that's Peter. He's the... The main guy behind the uh, HW bots, yes, and he's, the, he's actually the one taking care of breaking the site and taking him, taking him that yeah. back online. Yeah. And actually, he's the judge here at this competition. So I was saying, yeah, the kickoff event. It's like so that, there was a HyperX event. Kickoff event. Yes, there was, so there was a HyperX event at CS. We told we told you guys before where Extreme Addicts, among others, won stuff. And uh, so after. Kingston did another competition online qualifying for this competition that's where you have the teams like the Jagger Review team and uh, mm -hmm. okay. so they saw that it was working so well that they pretty much decided that this year in the same way for example MSI is having MOA or Gigabyte has had go mm -hmm. or is going to have go see so this Who year, knows? so knows? HyperX is turning into a one-time event or like a one-time trial event into something that is going to happen several times in the year and I'm pretty sure Kingston HyperX or HOT competition is probably going to have live finals on different continents this year. Let's say that's what we are expecting from them to do that. So, yeah, well, we hope it will that, That's, like that's what we hope right now. So... Um, so yes, this event is the competition with ten thousand dollars to win. Yep. This competition is featuring ten teams from either manufacturers or people that did qualify online. That's it. The online qualification uh, happened on the HW bots. 
uh, all the uh, all the other players that are here today uh, did their best in that competitions and they actually tried to push as much as they can. Yeah. So what's going on on the competition? Sites right now. What's what's going on in the field? So uh, we we can see on this we can see on the screen that there is Joe Br Jonani Br on the on the right. He's from Brazil. He's actually eating up his uh, system maybe to fix something or dry something. Yeah. And on the left side, the Danish guy. So Zizolio is the guy right now uh, in front of the camera, and the guy in the back that is um, I think cleaning up something. That's his partner. So if I talked with them before and they were telling me that they were having some issues with the, with the memory because they, were, um, they had like yeah, some dual channel issues related something so and they, they were not too sure if they had an issue with the banks on the, the, the dim banks or if it was something else something with the, <coughs> with the kids or so yeah. It could be interesting to see that uh, Jonan EBR was actually in the, in the amateur part of the inter event is now like competing with the, with the other guys so we will have chance to win some cash if he managed to, to put out some uh, some great results actually he is uh, before he was before actually he's on mounting but right before that he, he did submit uh, a new XTU score that is the 397 points and just before that one he was submitting one that was 394 points so the 397 points uh, was actually at 5.4 almost 5.5 gigahertz on the Intel uh, Pentium Anniversary Edition system he's using the uh, Z97 M Power Max AC mainboard from MSI that's right and uh, they're using of course the Cooler Master PSU Cooler Master Myers Cooler Master Keyboard there's the uh, BenQ screens. Yeah, they they have the Kingston SSD. Actually, we are always saying Kingston, but it's HyperX. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, a that's sub right. brand from from Kingston. HyperX is like that gaming uh, gaming brand from from Kingston. Mm -hmm. So it is the enthusiast brand. Kingston it, is more yes, is more so like the the corporate world, and HyperX yeah. is going to be more like so the should, consumer we, world. We should, th this event is a HyperX event. It's HyperX. It is Kingston, but it is it is HyperX. Yes. <laughs> So we are like uh, there, there's still three hours and twenty minutes in that competitions. Uh, so far, there is only seven bench, seven scores that have been submitted. Uh, no one or no one tried SuperPy 32M yet. Well, I think you know it's it's because of two things probably. One, SuperPy 32M is gonna run for a long time, right? Like almost five minutes. Well, it's done if, if they yeah you know it's like it's it's going to yeah at least five million. The problem is like right now they, they probably the guys are just trying out their memory and uh, XTU is only three minutes run, so it's slightly easier. Well, it's like a little bit more than three minutes because it's the Pentium anniversary edition, but it, it's it's less fast, of course. But but yeah, so I guess everyone is going to do their memory and Intel XTU runs, and then they will attack SuperPy probably for the last hour or so. We'll see. And then, but that that would be interesting to 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 get like uh, scores of day like every hours and every half an hours also at the same time. Yeah. So th there was a few questions on the chat. Yes, we knew that the screenshot things on the GPU was not working. It's now working fine. You can click and see all the screenshot from the submissions. We uh, already have the Intel X2 world record on the Pentium anniversary edition yep. with the 430 points. And although we already have the memory world record in the frequency by Team Gigabyte with 2282 megahertz. Cool. So actually, that these guys did prepare that. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy, of course, they did prepare they, that. They, they did prepare, yes. They, they were they were trying to trying to get everything in the uh, inside to to yeah, be yeah, sure yeah, yeah. to perform at all of the events they have to attend. Like they you guys, to, Shuf, you went to see them yesterday on the on the Gigabyte booth, right? Indeed. And they were actually, they have a uh, backup that is higher than that. <laughs> they actually have yeah. something even bigger than that. I think they're just keeping the, uh, the, the scores have to be produced during the competitions, but they actually can bring their, their own Kingston memory kit if they want. So that, yeah. that's what they did. They, they bought the Kingston Hyper, HyperX memory kit and then yeah. they test it and they know how high it can go. 
and since then they can prepare more and more than that. But it's, it's, it's very good if you already know before the competition what your system can do. Like if you already done it several times in a row and they probably benched that yesterday all the afternoon. So I mean, those guys are really, really going to be confident about, okay, oh, it's like, ah, 430. I mean, like right now, yeah, then maybe the XTU run is 430, but I'm pretty sure even oh, yeah, the memory score is going to be going much, much higher. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I don't think that anyone will try to catch them on the memory thing because of the uh, like the, they, they use the uh, SLC LM2 board. Yeah. Uh, well, and the, the only guys that could catch them from what I'm seeing right now is the team and you guys. <laughs> yeah, but they're I mean, using like, the same board. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, 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 their scores are going to be extremely close. Yes. Yeah. And I would not be surprised as, at least for the memory frequency that Gigabyte and Team AU are going to be the top leading teams here. The two top teams in that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, talking about the preparation, we saw some uh, interesting pictures yesterday on Facebook. The the team MSI that is made with uh, by Pepino and uh, PT1T, they they were actually preparing the the setup in their hotel room, and they tear down the, the TV that was in the wall, so they removed the TV from the wall, plugged the computer on it, put back the TV to prepare for this event today. Well, yeah, you know, if you come to, uh, you fly to Taipei, you're not bringing your display with you. I mean, like, everyone is not like you, truth me, so. Um, <laughs> okay, for the record, I did bring my display with me every time I was in Computex for the past four years, and I didn't do that this year. Uh, you, you know who has nothing in his luggage besides display, right? Like, uh, I had some spare, spare space, so why yeah, not use yeah, that? right. So anyway, so that's why the guys had to unmount the display, because if you want to prepare in your room and there's nowhere else you can go and you have no display, well then, you know, just get a display. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us on, on Twitch if you want to have more information about the specific team, which frequencies are running, uh, what, uh, what are the strategies and so on. We will go and ask them to see if... Uh, if they have more information, they can uh, they can share with us for that. There is a bit more than three hours left. There's actually three or 17 minutes left in these competitions. Uh, so far, so forth, that's Team AU leading. They are leading with a uh, total cash price of what they are. They can go back home with about two, 2,500 USD. They could, yes. They could, they could. There's three, there is more than three hours that can change that. You know, like I, I, I'm, I'm looking right now at the, the scoreboard and there's still a lot of holes in that scoreboard. I mean, like more than more than 80 percent of the po the, sub the scores to be submitted are not su submitted yet. So th there's room for for competition, and I'm pretty sure the competition is very soon going to hit. You know, overclocking is really not, it's that what makes overclocking very different from gaming. Right? From gaming, you play the game and why well, you lose, you win, and then you go up in the in the ranks or in the in the competition structure, but by a competition like this one, when there was uh, three benchmarks and you rank on each different benchmark by your position and that's how you get the, the cash price. And everyone, the first hour you're setting up, discovering... They, 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 like, they take know, it easy, they have ready. time, they have time to do that. So it's just take it easy, do as much as you can, do the best as you can. And that's it, you're here to perform. Yes, you can win a lot of cash. Yeah, but, but you have to, but, perform. That's, but that's you have to strategize as well. Like sometimes it's good to not put your scores up too fast, right? Like sure, you you do your screenshot. You have to submit your score. You cannot hold on to your. No, that's right? that's the thing. The, the live competition things you cannot send back. Yes, there's no, no way to send back. There's the no live send back because but but you can still strategize and you know like. Wait a little bit that there's a few more teams and then you can still run other benchmark and go back Indeed. if you can. Or hopefully Indeed. you can. Um, so far, so forth in this HyperX OC Takeover World Final, there, there was the memory clock that is actually led by uh, the Team AU guys, the, the Team Gigabyte that, is, that have the biggest frequency. There, there was only three submissions for that. There is no submission for SuperPy 32M and there is four submission for Intel XTU. So we'll take a short break, maybe five to 10 minutes. Don't hesitate, don't hesitate, don't hesitate to, to ask us any question if you want a specific team. We will be uh, maybe doing like a, a quick tour of uh, presenting uh, one of the teams yeah. uh, to, in, the next, uh, in the next few minutes. So we're gonna take a short break and we are coming back in the next few minutes. Keep pushing yeah. it. Uh,
Secure the garden by expandable lake bands. Out of sight, that cave. They came in a, a spaceship of some sort. Whatever those people told you they saw last night. How is it you are able to leave the planet? Will not the government structure collapse in your absence?
Our teacher locked us in, and we weren't allowed to do anything until we were told. She just said to stay calm and stuff. We have an accident or something, but there was two kids that uh, were out going to the bathroom, and they came running back and said somebody, two people got shot.
inside this room, all of my dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams.
dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams.
Welcome back. So we are still here at the Kingston HyperX. I, I should stop saying just, Kingston. Just, just call it the HyperX. It's OC the HyperX OC takeover, not take down, takeover. Take over. Take over. Yeah, that's right. So welcome back to the HyperX OC takeover competitions here today in Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, we are we're halfway through the competitions right now. There is actually uh, less than about two and a, two and a half an hour to. To do to do all the yeah. latest scores, uh, and so there are far still there's teams that haven't submitted. Yeah, that's the thing. There's teams that haven't submitted any scores, and there is actually no one that submit any Super Pipe 32M scores. Yes. Don't forget, there's I think there's like 2,000 USD to win just by being the first, uh, the, the fastest one on the on Super Pipe 32M, and yeah, that yeah, was yeah. actually what Lucky Noob from Indonesia is actually in Team Jagat OC was saying like, what? No one is running Super Pipe 32M yet. Say, oh, if I had a second screen, I would have set up a second, yeah. second computer just for that. But, but that's it, right? It's like, but that's the choice. I mean, people are, people are actually fighting a lot on uh, getting XTU. Like everyone is on XTU. There's a few reasons for that. First, uh, most people knows that the Gigabyte team will most probably win the uh, maximum frequency, maximum memory clock. Whoa, I, might, might. I'd say. They might just, right? I mean, if you look even the, just the, the Intel XU score from Team AU compared to the one to Gigabyte, it's, like, ah, it's very, 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 very close. I mean, yeah, there's it's only, extremely close. There's only two points. That's right. There's like uh, four, uh, 433 points for Team AU. That's uh, a little improvement over the scores they did at four of, uh, 430 mm. uh, just before we, uh, we did the, the break, before coming back here. And actually, the Team Gigabyte submitted the new world record for XTU on this uh, Pentium uh, Intel Intel Pentium Anniversary Edition with 435 points. So there is only there is only two points difference for them in that. Uh, all the other guys, actually, the three other teams that are uh, Team Brazil with uh, Jonah and EBR, uh, Team Jagadosi in front of us as. Uh, with Lucky Noob and his uh, friends uh, splits and the team MSI, PT1T and Pepino Rank. That's the only three yeah. teams that did submit the uh, the XTU scores. Oh, Pepino, the guy said they killed the CPU already. <laughs> and it's gone. Yes. Well, you know, apparently the CPU was not that great and uh, they said, well, let's just see and no, it didn't <laughs> solve anything. It didn't solve anything, yes. Uh, actually, these three teams are below 400 points. 
yeah. and in XTU that that's uh, quite interesting. Most of these, most of the teams, uh, Team Ice Rock had a 408 point. I think that uh, the scores will be uh, up on the on the list quite soon, or they might be keeping that in um, in in, uh, in, the, in their hands and keep improving before submitting. Yeah. But well, we know that it's 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 not really, it's not really the best move to do to 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 hold the score and not submit not. that in the ranking because sometimes you can like, like this happened at the Intel event like Deddy yes. didn't submit the, the one of the scores and say oh I can improve that score and in the end he, he had only one out of two benchmark. But that's the issue also especially with benchmarks such as if you have you know here you have memory clock and next you so it's very easy. The, you're easily tempted to like, okay, I'm gonna save my XTU profiles and I'm gonna get back to that later. And, uh, <laughs> and then, well, you never know, right? If something goes wrong, you know, bad insulation or CPU dies for some reason or what, you know, anything. It, yeah, Come anything can happen. And you have to unmount. Mm -hmm. And then you have 30 minutes, you have to rerun everything because you didn't. You didn't, you didn't think about submitting, yeah. Well, then, that, that's, then that, that could be be very pay painful. <laughs> that could be very painful for them indeed. Yes. Uh, one of the one of the things, also the the scoreboard is available. The, 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 there was a few questions on the live on the Twitch chat. The the scoreboard is available on HWBots, and if you want to go directly to it, you have, you can click below here. I think it's yeah that that space here, there, or there. There's the uh, HyperX OC takeover uh, scoreboard, and that's the link to directly to direct the uh, directly to the HWBot website. What uh, is that? You can also follow the scores on Twitter as well. For you, if you use Twitter and you're going to, you have to go shopping or something like right now. Just or need to get some food Twitter, or put Twitter on your phone. Follow the hashtag about esports and you get all the scores. And the the, the account on Twitter is at hwbot esports underscore esports with the s. Yes. HWBot underscore esports. All the all the scores update are being published yeah. as soon as they are published. And so you right can now, click on the link, and, and you, you have, have the link, the and you have directly the, the submission page, yeah, and the, yes. and the screenshot yeah. and the and the details. Uh, one thing, the team Gigabyte just submitted a new XTU score of 442 Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. mark. Right, let me let me have a look quickly at the screenshot. So let's let's have a look at the screenshot to see which frequency they were running on that one. I was talking before with High Cookie and he, he was like, man, like, he, he was really, really confident. So, okay, there's no speech on attached, sure but, 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 there are... There seems to be six. benching at 6 gigahertz, so that's like 500 megahertz above anyone else, because yeah. most of the most of the team that are benching, uh, that that is the uh, China team, S-Rock, MSI team with uh, BT1 and Pepino, the uh, Denmark team and like everyone is benching at 5.5 and actually the, that that CPU the Intel Pentium uh, anniversary edition uh, they overclocked that one at 5 gigahertz with 1.5 volts and usually when they were benching X XTU at 5.5 uh, gigahertz they have uh, they were having like 1.71 or 1.7 oh, volts on the, on the CPU yeah. well I think like the there's this kind of battle right now between Team Gigabyte and Team Team AU. <laughs> but that, that's funny because they, they say, oh, I made that settings, do you want the settings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it's, but it's not just that one day bench on the same board, right? So it's yeah. like, for them, it's it's easier to uh, like uh, troubleshoot stuff because one guy can test this setting, you test this one, and if it works for him, it doesn't work for you. You just switch them around and see if it's going. And like, I saw Cookie, he was with his little notebook, and like, so guys, what do you have for this? What do you have for that? Okay, me, I had this. Try that. So I think it's this is for sure helping. It's giving the team a, a clear advantage here. Actually, that that's funny because Dino is here and Dino is like managing the, the team. Yeah, he's, he's in like managing the Team table, AU yeah. and as they are like they have two tables side by side. Yeah. And uh, actually, that's the that's the ladder. That's the 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 further the table that is the further on the screen. And actually, there's the two tables, like the Gigabyte one and the Team AU one, side yeah. by side. And it's like going on one side, it's like, okay, uh, you have to push more on this, you have to push more on that. And then going to the other side, it's like, oh, yeah, nice, oh, nice on this, nice on that. Yeah. That's interesting. It's like it's like a, like a pro gaming team with a, with a manager or something yeah, like this. Yeah, exactly. Like, you need someone that gives direction. 
and just sometimes you know just like hey guys like focus back on this I'm I saw you guys doing this before you know, why you didn't go check that more and you know sometimes you forgot to you forget to change a few a few settings or a few things so here he is he is here to make sure both teams are going to succeed indeed I'm pretty that, sure that's, that's gonna that's be the best, plan, uh, right? that's gonna be the best for all of them Uh, actually, on the screen you have 8-pack, and 8-pack I've been benching quite hard, it's using the Maximus 7 Gene. Yep. So that's not the mini ITX, that's the Micro ATX yes. uh, mainboard. I like this board actually, it's pretty cool. It looks cool. It looks I, I, cool. I, I, I do prefer like... the impact, I do prefer the impact, yeah, the mini yeah, yeah. ITX one. Well, you know, after it depends, it's like, um, it's a matter of preference if you like a, a really tiny board for benching or something where you have that little bit of extra space. Which is always quite convenient, I think, with micro ATX. Mm. And actually, the, um, one of the things, so some of the people were using the, the Maximus 7 uh, Impact. Yep. They're using the Impact and using the internal IGP when they were, the over, when they were overclocking. Well, But is, here is we, it, uh, what is Extreme Addict using? He's using the Mini ITX board. He's using the Mini ITX board, but he's using an extra VGA on it. Oh yeah, he's But using that fish, fish. <laughs> fish thing. It's, it's a bit fishy. Yeah, we posted some pictures on, the, on on our Facebook page if you guys want to check out what the fish looks like. I don't need to tell you what it is. You're just gonna notice what what I'm talking about. And then, so Eggbike was uh, is also using an extra VGA, uh, uh, although that um, so the uh, the Team AU and Gigabyte team they are using although an extra VGA on the last slot of the main board yeah. because that one is linked to the uh, to the South Bridge and it's not impacted by the frequencies. The direct frequencies from the right. CPU. It's more about like the, the base lock and so forth. Um, another thing is that uh, most of the team are benching around. We're benching around 5.5 on the G3250 Pentium Anniversary Edition. Uh, team China was uh, benching at 5.5. They were close to minus 100, minus 100 degrees, while uh, the team Astro was like minus 110 degrees. And we remember that the team uh, team AU guy and Gigabyte were like minus 120. Yeah. So that CPU seems to to be around that sweet spot, like between minus 100 and that's minus 120. It, that's right, yeah. But that's the thing. We the Devil's Canyon CPU, the latest one uh, that have been announced by uh, by Intel just a few days ago, the 4790K and the 4690K. APAC did test some of them, and he, and he was telling us that. The, the call bug issue is so weird that sometimes you can reach only minus 80 with it and sometimes you can have like minus 120. That's so it's, right. it's not consistent. That's, it's there's not consistent definitely something and, and in we, that. And we don't know exactly yet what is impacting that, that call bug point, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, maybe maybe in the, in the coming weeks when more people are going to bench, or bench with it and like report of their experience. Or maybe some settings that uh, can uh, yes. impact that again. But the, the main the main change uh, for the Devils Canyon CPU that's the uh, as well refresh and the Devils Canyon are the the um, the K KSQ the unlock the non the unlock one that they, especially for overclockers uh, that would be quite interesting to see how uh, overclockers make a good usage of that. There's also a new uh, TIM so that's the thermal interface material yeah, that's, that's right. in between the IHS that is protecting the CPU and the core the die of the CPU. That so is the, it the should core give itself. a better better thermal conductance to the Um, to the exchange of the heat between the, the pot and the, 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 the CPU core, that the CPU and the CPU yes. core that need to be cooled down, and that, that's actually something that other people were looking looking for and looking at. Well, I even remember some. like uh, there were there were some discussions um, at Gigabyte earlier last year, and uh, some Intel guys were around, and that was one of the discussion points that was okay. The, like if, the, they, the if there's something well. coming, well, this is one of the things that. Mm. That one of the things was the first as well yes yeah, CPUs that was around last year like over a year ago yeah. were, uh, were a bit odd uh, compared to what was expected from the, yeah. from the other because and so on so there's a new score guys the guys from Jagat Review finally made it over the 400 marks bar in, in XTU like 401 so 401 Otherwise, my screen still streaming uh, not no, right um, now thank God. not right now it's not streaming <laughs> so many blue screens 
All right, so congrats to them. So they right now they are top three, which is but actually that's not their first score because they had they had the first score, but they didn't submit the right screenshot. Yes, so they, that's right. They had to redo the benchmark. So Massman went to them, the judge went to them and say, oh, that's not the right score. So if you want that score, you need to re, to to rerun and uh, and they say, oh, and look at him say, ah, no worry, I would just yeah. improve that score. And you I, think, I think actually it was uh, the screenshots was almost correct. It's just the XT, the XTU was in the wrong tab. It was on the safe profile page, so you had the, the profiles with the different scores from before displayed, but you could not read the, the, the actual score that was in the back. Yeah. And that score was 396, so they, they did great of rerunning it. Maybe they, I don't know if they changed something, mm -hmm. but even if they rerun it and get, got those extra three or four points to pass over the 400, I think it's just a, a proof of that sometimes, well, you get a score. Submit it, but rerun with the same settings. If you if you if you think you can get a little bit more by luck, right? Indeed, it's always a matter of luck. You know, when uh, when you want to luck and choice, actually, because yes. the luck the luck is about okay, do I push my luck more and run again, or do I push my luck just enough to be safe and do something stronger after? That's it. <clears throat> The, the the luck the luck is about the the last minutes. So yeah, if is. if I do it, do I do it now and do I go that far? Yeah. So so I think uh, what we will see in the next the next hour is like people this in, this XTU um, column I think in our scoreboard is going to fill up hopefully. Uh, I hope we will get score from Denmark pretty quick. Uh, Team China as well. Team Ace Rock still has to submit. OC UK, I don't know, APAC has no score submitted yet, so I'm not too sure what is he is up to. We can see him right now on the screen, so... And maybe he was not happy with the, the score he had previously, so maybe he's uh, trying to push the score as much as he can and just submit a big score. But that fall back to, the, to what we were saying a bit uh, earlier today. It, it is a risky strategy of, of not willing to show off the score you have. Mm -hmm. And in exchange, you take the risk of maybe having no scores if something goes wrong. If something goes very wrong. So, so, so that's it for this update. We will uh, take all the questions on the Twitch chat. You can you can click below below the below the live stream on the on, on the Twitch TV channel to go and uh, access the scoreboard. There is two hours and seventeen minutes left in these competitions, and right before the break, we will give you. The two new benchmarks that just got submitted, it's 403 marks by Team Denmark. So finally they have over 400 points, they, that's their first submission also. Well not just that, they, they actually make it top 3 because they uh, have a better score than Jagat Review. So. <laughs> So I think it's very well done. It just proves that yes, nothing is actually finished, and so we might have a, a battle at the top between uh, the Team AU and the Gigabyte team, and we will have a battle at around the 400, 405 mark, I think, mm -hmm. and those guys, those will be uh, probably so Denmark, Jacket Review, and hopefully a few more. Indeed. So we catch you right after the break, and don't forget to ask us all the questions you have on the Twitch live chat. Yep. Thank you, Timothy. See you in uh, five to ten minutes. See you and we're gonna minutes, see sure. you that again. Enjoy.
let's imagine the future, or let's imagine the kind of future we might be able to live in, and see if we can bring that into being. What constitutes us? Us includes all those Chinese people and all those black people and everyone else. But we haven't extended our concept of us to include the people in the future yet. And so that's what this is about. It's about the idea of extending empathy forward into the future.
But generally, you think what you hear on the radio is terrible. I think basically it's a product. And the reason why it is being manufactured is basically just to make money. And it, it seems to me to have very little to do with the, um, the basic reasons for making music in the first place. Had a slightly, slightly little technical issue here. Oh, it's just some guy decided to open the the blinds on the side, the electronic blinds, and of course, a cable was tangled in there, and well, the whole our, our whole system started so the whole to system go up. is like <laughs> like and it's gone. So yeah, we are, we are fixing. So actually now we can see what's going on outside, and we actually have a pretty cool view on the 101, which is not bad at all. Maybe. We can show you. So we're gonna. We, we will show you guys what's going on at the. Uh, yeah, I think it's. Yeah, some some other cable have been pulled away. I think. They're okay. trying to figure out. It pulled pretty hard actually. <laughs> like this, Bassman. Not on this one. Okay. Good. So yeah, right. We were saying that from here we can see the Taipei 101. Uh, so yeah, so that's the view from the window. So now they open the blind, we can we can see it. Sadly today the weather is not that awesome here in Taipei. We've had like showers and showers all morning and all afternoon, so yeah. Not really. Actually, we could just leave the cam there and stop benching <laughs> outside, no? Okay. And that's it. All right. So, how is the competition going? Well, it's going pretty well. Like, um, there has been a few submissions in the last minutes. Uh, also, uh, Gigabyte, uh, Team Gigabyte, Team AU, and uh, some of the other guys switched system and started benching Superpy 32M. 
which I guess is a, is a good thing because there's not that much time left in the competition. So There's actually only one hour and 40 minutes left in this competition. Yeah, right. So Team Gigabyte changed, the, they changed to the, the motherboard, to a new motherboard, which is actually, they changed to the same one. It's the same Z, Z7, That's the same reference, but it's a, a different one. Yeah, and uh, Team AU is benching with the LN2 version of the Z97. So that means they will maybe break the memory world record. Well, they changed it to bench supervise, so I'm not sure they're gonna... Yeah, the, no, the, the, the thing like, is, uh, they could have broke that, but they already have the top high score, so they don't really need to. Yeah. And the uh, the most important thing after that is that they want to, to push the uh, Superbad 32M yes. so, as much as they can. Yeah, so the scores have started to be submitted, and Team AU already has a 4 minutes, 59 seconds, 281 Superbad 32M run. And 8-pack is has submitted his first... I think it's his first submission in the competition right now. Um, it seems check. like it. It seems uh, like it is. Yeah. Yes. So that's his first submission. And his first submission is a four minute fifty eight run. But actually, that score is the world record on Super Pi on that on uh, that on the CPU they're using. Okay. So. But that's quite nice. That's quite nice. That's quite interesting. So besides that, like all the other teams started submitting a little bit more, like we were saying before, uh, Denmark had a submission. They didn't update the submission since. Um, MSI did an XC submission at 419. Yeah, 419. And that submission, if I'm right, was done, yes, at 5.7 gigahertz. So Team AU, 5.9. Uh, nice. uh, Team Gigabyte, 6 gigahertz. MSI 5.7. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, we haven't seen any XCU scores yet for uh, for APAC, so we're still waiting for that. Um, so I, I don't know what APAC was doing. Maybe it was trying to uh, to reach the Super Bad 32 m first, and then we will, it will switch to XTU and the memory clock. I don't think so. That's oh, that, yeah. that that would not make that much sense. That's the issue. Yeah, because now I don't know what... Now he's still doing some super pie, right? So I think you want to be sure that his benchmark will stay as uh, at this level. So he wants to improve his, his score as much as he can. Then maybe it will change to something else. After. Yeah, maybe uh, what he wants to do is to keep that... Make that record more, uh, more secure, right? And just keep it this way. Like that it's yeah it's gonna be safer for for everyone and there will be no like uh, there's no there's, once D will change for XTU there's not there's not, there's not going to be a coming back to uh, to Super Pi, right? and then it's like once you go there there's no way back well yes especially if you have one hour and thirty minutes left I mean like no he can probably allow maybe uh, okay let's let's say fifteen to twenty minutes for uh, Super Pi and then. Okay, maybe I don't know if he wants probably to, to clean up or I don't know if he wants to change board or I'm not sure what his plan is, but if he wants to change stuff, he still needs to reboot. Uh, stop using Windows XP and yeah, start and working on memory work. clock yeah. and uh, XCU scores. So there were some people saying that 8-pack normally uh, is mother, that you say 8-pack normally leaves his top submission to, to the right end of the competitions. Yes, that's true. That, that is true for online competitions. That's true for uh, the, the, the qualification for this. Uh, yes, because you yeah, can always save the screenshot on the USB and uh, just upload it at the last minute, right? That's, yeah. that's called sandbagging and it's not the a problem if you do that online because that's... That's, the way That's actually works. part of the game when you do that yes. online. But here at the live competitions, he, he's, there, there won't be that many uh, opportunity to do that because and people are always checking and you need to update the scores as fast as you can. So yeah, and, it's, and it's not just that. When you make a score, the judge comes and has a look at your display to make sure you actually did the score. And you did the scores here yeah, during the and, competition and right time. now, and then you make your screenshot and save it onto a USB. If you don't call the judge 
you can't save it to a USB and give it to the uh, judge like later no, on. It's you not need going to say it right away. So that's why it's interesting doing the live competitions because you cannot send back and you don't have the choice. No, there's no choice. That's that's the rules. That's that's how it is. So uh, we can't call it. Uh, no, we we can't we can't say that Eight Pack is sandbagging here in any way. He's just strategizing his runs, I guess, and just yeah, taking a little bit of a risk. Maybe that was his uh, his goal. Uh, let's say I bench Super Pi 32M first I'm, because I'm, I know that all the guys are gonna use the new Pentium one. So right at, right after that, I know what to do with these two benchmark. Well, who knows? Maybe he. He know he he wanted that record, right? Maybe so he was just going there, and that's the that's the score he wanted. So now he has it. He probably is is going to try to uh, make a better score with it for a few more minutes, and then he's going to switch because he will either feel safe or either have no more time, and it will be, it will yeah, be that's, time to switch that's, over. Yeah, that's that's a good uh, that's a tricky game to play, but that's the game of overclocking, right? Yeah. Um, Timothée, we are here at the HyperX OC Takeover event, yep. but uh, what was going on this week about all the overclocking event here in Taipei, Taiwan? Oh, there, there was a lot of overclocking event. I think the, the major event that happened was the, the Intel OC Challenge or the Unleash the Beast um, competition. Uh, so that competition was a Haswell refresh competition. So Devil's Canyon CPUs, um, they had a... A pretty similar format in terms of uh, teams participating because um, so computer vendors, uh, motherboard manufacturer could bring their own team. Mm -hmm. There was um, an open. There was no rules for what memory brand you would. No, use. It, was, it was open. You there was with everyone uh, yeah. every six you want. And um, the only the only main thing was there was two 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 different divisions. I would yeah. say two and competitions yes, in one. Two, yeah, two competitions in one, and there's it was air liquid slash liquid, and it was uh, LN2. It, uh, it 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 actually ended up that um, the air LN, uh, air liquid competition pretty the, much for, for some people board. ended up being like a, a air liquid frost because air I mean, liquid and some weird kind of cooling some so. guys were benching in the uh, bench boxes like the guys some gigabyte and they ended up yes with pretty good scores and uh, i think the the minus 50 ambient temperature in the box helped them so i mean like yes it is air cooling it is a clever way of doing air cooling i mean you would live in canada i mean like we did at Truthman, you you can bench and yeah, just like you, you can just go on air cooling outside. and you get the air from outside. It's like minus 25 outside, and you can just yeah. use that one like uh, like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, there is some other competition going on this uh, this week, the, especially this uh, uh, during the computer, so the, the OC show during the on the live on the, on the show floor. Yeah, there's uh, so um, there's several of the vendors that um, that have their um, their own show on the stage, and uh, the idea is. Usually they they, they, um, they attract people you know working in the trade show. It's really hard you know for you have to imagine Computex is thousands of people coming there to check it out. And so LN2 is always a very good way to uh, to bring people to and catch to, them for at least ten minutes, mesmerized them. by the smoke and everything, and not necessarily understanding because yeah. So some some guys decided to also run competitions at the same time. Like this, they can actually show us show a little bit of competitivity and not just like okay what well, those guys so there's some record stage there's some uh, OC competitions and um, most of the motherboard vendors are all having their own overclocking booth right there's um, and it would actually make no sense for them to have overclocking boards but not overclocking at computers yeah. because how do you demo an overclocking board? I mean, you can demo gaming quite easily, but yes. to, to demo the overclocking, the capabilities of the overclocking board, you need to have overclocking demonstration for that. Yes, so Gigabyte, for example, has a booth in the 101 that we visited yesterday. You can check uh, uh, the, our YouTube video about that. You can go on overclocking-tv.com and you can see all the videos there. Yeah, and uh, then we did, we did basically a video for all the OC yeah. events. We went to here. MSI, yeah. yesterday the also Galaxy, uh, Astrock. So yeah, everyone uh, everyone is doing some OC. And even uh, Zotac is doing something. This and year. even Zotac, yeah. yeah Nacho Arroyo, yeah. overclocker from Argentina, was flown here. And uh, yes, he is doing yeah indeed some some overclocking for. That, for that's good. And the, and the, at the actually on Friday evening, that's going to be starting tomorrow evening. Mm. We will have uh, the special. 
events. That special event is the HW Bot 10 year anniversary. Yes. So this event is, um, I, I mean, for me, it's a, it's a highlight of Computex, not, not just because I worked on uh, organizing a part of the event, but so the, the, the main idea is that usually Computex, everyone is spread over, right? We don't really have the time to, to talk to everyone besides in the party. And we wanted to have that gathering as a, as a place for every, every avocado to come, to bench, bench what they want, how they want it. And, uh, and their way, and, and for and how long chill, they want. Chill and relax with some some fresh beer, some drinks. Talk with their friends. Sit on the couch there. Uh, there's a really fast internet, so everyone can live stream their own rig if they want. That's actually would be quite interesting because we will be broadcasting live the complete event starting from Saturday morning here, tape time at 10 a.m. or something like this. So that's gonna be going on for the next 48 hours. Then we're yeah. gonna take a break to have some rest. And then we're gonna start again on uh, on Monday to to close this event. So that's gonna be three days of uh, of full live stream, full benching, people yeah. coming from uh, everywhere around the world. Uh, so far, how many overclockers will be attending that, um, that event? So there's two ways you can attend the event. You can come as a visitor, or you can come as an overclocker. I mean, having a bench spot. So you, your intention is not just to uh, network and discuss, but it's also to uh, to go there to bench. So we arranged uh, approximately uh, 1,800 liters of LN2 and there's another 2,000 on standby depending how many people want to run four way. Um, so there's 15 overclockers that confirmed uh, so pur purchasing a bench spot, uh, bench spot ticket. So that's already, uh, yeah, so I think we have all the top top people that we usually see, uh, Abu As is there, there's, there's uh, the Gnidal of course from uh, from Kingston, uh, we have um, Elmor that is back from Sweden, so it's going to be a benching of back course. Here in Taiwan um, I mean we also have all the guys that, that are here pretty much benching, there's the APAC, there's going to be like... Um, all the, the team AU guys, so Young yep. Pro, uh, JJJC, um, everyone, I mean, is registered for the... So that would be interesting to, be have, interesting. to have And we are going to run competitions also. And that's although the part I, was, I wanted to jump in, then there will be some competition there, no cash price, but that no, would be some know, in like, entertaining competitions, you know, I would say. Sometimes you, you compete for no cash, right? I, I started, if when I played football with my friends, I was never making any money, so it's... it's Sometimes you just do it for the for the for the fun of the sport, right? Of course, because most of the people here do that for the fun. Some of them do that for the job, but well, actually, yes, but it's still mostly for fun, mostly because we yeah, like this. So we're probably are going to give away some of the stuff that our partners gave out for for the event. Um, so there, there's going to be two competition formats. One would be like a bracketing, uh, a bracketed uh, competition. So in a way, you have four teams, four teams, three, then two, then one, and a winner, right? And then the, the two winners go against and, and, uh, each other. So that competition is going to run on uh, XTU, and uh, there will be another competition on the next day, which is, uh, yeah, well, I don't know, we call it a triathlon, but uh, I'm not too sure if the triathlon naming is, uh, we, we are not that good at naming our competitions anyway. Um, but that competition is based on time, so the idea is that same in the same way as a tribe, and there's uh, three benchmarks, and those three benchmarks are necessary to rank. So you need to submit in those three benchmarks, and all those three benchmarks give you a result in time. So for example, Superpie gives you a result in like minutes and seconds <laughs> and milliseconds. So there's going to be this one, there's going to be Fry Bench. Which uh, not that many other talks no, actually it's, use, it's, not, it's not actually a, it's not a popular. major benchmark. It's not but a, it's it is a benchmark. It gives you points on the bot. So, well, this is probably a good way for maybe to, I don't know, wake up some of the guys and, uh, hey, have you tried this benchmark? And some people at home will be watching the stream and they will be, oh, man, I have no idea what this thing is. Like, I didn't even know it existed. So, I mean, it would be interesting to see. And then there will also be um, W Prime 1024, I think. Yes. Okay. So you add up all those scores. And uh, what is interesting is the competition lasts two hours. There's one hour competition, and we remove half of the players. We keep the, the top so, half. so it's like a, it's like a time death match. Kind of. It's a yeah. It's, and so you have to submit in those three benchmarks for during the first hour. So so you cannot you cannot do like 
Yeah. And what is happening here that no, some you, of the team can't. didn't even submit any scores? No, you can't do that. You can't afford it. If you want to stay, you know that by that time you need to have submitted a three. And now, after that, so we're probably going to have eight players left by half the time. But 30 minutes later, only five people left. And, so, and, and I think like after that, the five... The, like, the five last one are going to compete for the last half an hour. Interesting, interesting kind of, um, of new competition system, actually. Well, we just try to uh, not add pressure, but just to make it more uh, time um, time based and um, yeah, to add a bit more excitement to it. Because if not, you know, it's like everything. If you made a football game of five hours, well, it's not going to be about football anymore, but it's going to be about endurance, right? <laughs> And uh, so, the, so the idea is that, okay, well, we're going to make it like this and we will see how this goes. We will take the feedback of the guys and I think if this works well, then why, why not implement that future in future competitions? That might be right? future, like the, the concept for the next competitions, well, live competitions. Yeah, especially when you do a live broadcast like this, it, it, is, uh, it is interesting to have this format because if you, have, if you can see and uh, comment live on the screens of the guy, when you, if you have like... 30 minutes and you know in 30 minutes your 10 teams are going to go through three benchmarks well there's a lot of things to say in that case Indeed, you, yeah, you can't like just keep talking about every single adjustments they're doing and all that stuff so um, it's yeah. going to be yeah I'm, re I'm really looking forward to that even actually the, uh, we will be setting up like starting to roll but yeah. the, the broadcast is going to start on the broadcast is going to start on the Saturday at 10 a.m. local time here in Taipei so that's actually 8 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. Here in Taipei, Taiwan, it's 10 p.m. in the U.S., in the East Coast. Yeah. That's right in the middle of the night for Europe. For Australians, you uh, remove, you add up two hours, I think, something like, depending so, where you are in Australia. So that should be like around lunchtime for Australia then. Yeah, for example, uh, today started at 11, uh, and I remember it was 1.30, I think, or 1, 1 in, uh, in Melbourne or something. Like that. So actually, the uh, Stu lead is telling us would be nice to see the monitors to see what change etc what they are doing actually what you guys don't see is that we can uh, we can partly see what uh, APAC is doing because we, we plugged our system on uh, to uh, split its monitor but um, so we, we can't show it to you because we cannot show it live for a few technical reasons but we can yeah. we can but it, see it is here. possible so this is planned for the um, for the, the broadcast at the HW but event this weekend so if you guys want to see uh, screens of uh, overclockers benching lives, tune in and you will see that we will be using that, that whole system on uh, on eight setups at a time, uh, six setups at a time. Six setups, yeah. yeah. For, so we will be able to, this weekend we will be demonstrating the yeah. new system we will be using for the for the next live broadcast for overtaking competitions. Yeah. It's basically called the OCTV Live Gears. Or OCTV yeah, Gears. that's how we call it. That's it's how we call like it internally. Um, but so it is possible to be done. It's just a question of uh, technicalities and logistics. Yeah. For example, this this live broadcast was prepared uh, yesterday afternoon, pretty much. So we didn't cross Computex. We didn't have the time to add up extra stuff. So we kept it very basic. But uh, I hope you guys are having fun listening to us, blah blah, thing for hours and blah blah blah, and all that. Stuff. <laughs> blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> anyway, that's gonna be interesting because if you guys want to see a specific specific people benching this weekend let us know so we can choose and arrange that with the overclockers and tell them okay we want uh, there's some people that are here on the stream that want to watch you guys benching that want to see exactly what you're going on on the screen and so on so let us know on the on the twitch live chat and uh, let us know if which one you, you would prefer for that yeah. actually it won't be six stream at, at the, it will be we can broadcast up to six person so we can we will be like commenting and changing the the, the views on uh, on that. Yeah. So just let us know who you would, you would like to see benching. Yeah, I think that can, all the Australian guys you would like to, to arrange, see like the right? team AU guys. It would be, it would like be also easier to arrange the switching because we will be in a in a in a less populated environment with a lot more space. So for us, it would be easier to um, to arrange everything. So let's go back quickly to the to the scoreboard to. Um, updates was the last update um, if we look at the, the actual overall ranking of that competition team AU is ahead of gigabyte by 250 points so I guess the gigabyte guys um, they 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 all uh, the team AU and gigabyte changed their board so right now they, they're probably done tweaking the, the XP for uh, super and the submitted scores but 
what makes Team AU ahead of Gigabyte is just the fact that Gigabyte hasn't submitted yet their, their Super Pi run. So once they will have it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be extremely tight between those two teams. Very, very, very close. Especially look at the XTU scores. Well, the memory, yeah, the memory is close as well, even though the, there's, a clear, there's a clear difference between both. But we'll see what the Super Pi is like. And what is interesting, the Team AU guys are running on the LN2 version and the uh, Gigabyte guys didn't change the LN2 version. So it, yeah. would be, it would be interesting to see what that does. So far, only Team United Overclickers that is uh, made and composed by Extreme Addict only. Uh, some issues uh, managing to boot up the system. He was uh, actually complaining earlier today that yep. he could not boot at 5.5 GHz mm. on, the, on the Intel Pentium Anniversary Edition. So I think he was maybe running in some kind of uh, of issues like mm. condensation issues maybe because here it's it's in, here in Taipei Taiwan it's Asia it's it's really humid and uh, the weather is actually completely humid here it's like raining outside it's not it's not a good weather so so that's gonna that's that's something that's getting very uh, difficult for the overclockers there. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's make another break. Let's see if we can get some more uh, super prize scores. I see Peter that is actually adding a score. So let's maybe wait to see what that score okay, is. Okay, so let's wait 30 seconds and <laughs> see that score coming up. I want to know. I, I want to know what this is. I, I want to know who 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 made the latest super prize submission. He is typing the score as we speak. Yes, yes. So just to join, uh, to get back, uh, meanwhile, to uh, that question of uh, embedding uh, and streaming the screens. Yes. You can you can see bias. You, you can will see be able to see everything, pretty, pretty much, much everything yeah. unless they are benching Fire Strike Extreme. Unless they are benching over 1080p as well. Yeah. Right now the the solution is uh, limited to 1080p. So everything that is uh, below or that has a weird uh, resolution, for example, I don't know, some uh, 796 by something something impossible that never something that, something that should not even exist. Yeah. So in in that case, it would be uh, yeah, it would be. Uh, not possible, but, but 1080p no problem at all, and then it gets it makes it really a lot more exciting because we can tell you okay that tweaking that tweaking this. But we, that that would be the best thing for the brackets competition because you, you can have like yeah. four like one of the the four or five people competing against each yes. other with the screen, and although having at the same time the uh, exactly, the, yes. the the camera on those the camera on those guys and although the screen that would be quite interesting to see yeah because we can we can that that's the biggest issue here we got we, we need to to make a break go on go check and talk with the guys have uh, have some new information and stuff like this to be sure that you know we get the right information at the right time mm. so it seems like the new score is now updated it was from um so well, actually, uh, there's two new scores that uh, that have we have. But the most recent one is Team AU that improved their um, Super Pi score. So this one is at four minutes fifty-five seconds, one hundred fifty-six milliseconds. And this uh, the second score I was saying is actually on the USB, so it's on his way to us. Uh, let's have a look at that Team AU score so, uh, to see what what this score is about. So the, we're running at 6.3. They're running at 6.3 gigahertz? Yes. Oh my god. They are using the 4770K CPU. On the LN2 board. On the Z97X-SOC Force LN2 board. For limited, gigabyte, special yes. limited overclockers edition. Well, especially at limited, uh, I would be really happy to see that board actually in shops. So like this, everyone could, uh, even if it's limited and there's, uh, if it's in shops, there will be a lot of people actually buying that board probably. Yeah. And then it will be probably not be limited at some point. It will be everyone will be able to get one. That would be the, actually, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. If you guys want to know more information about that board, we did a, a special presentation video. Uh, actually, right after the lunch, like we, the iCookie was benching that main board, and then we we took it away from from him. Like, oh, can we take the, the board for five minutes to make the, the video? Yeah. And we did shoot the video about that board with all the information. You can go on the uh, Overclocking TV website, overclocking-tv.com, and you can find all this information. We will copy copy the, the link on the 
on the on the chat right away. Seems like there is a new score update again. Yeah, there's a new score, <coughs> and this score is from Gigabyte. So, like I was saying, the rankings are going to change probably. So this score is a four minute forty nine seconds and seven nineteen milliseconds. Um, so this score is actually faster than uh, Team AU's latest submission. And so let's have a look at the screenshot to see if how how fast the guys are running this. So oh, six point four gigahertz. So they are actually increasing. They are increasing nicely. They score. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, Gigabyte hadn't submitted yet on SuperPi, so that's their yeah. first. That's their. Oh that's no, their first that's right. Their first SuperPi submission. Definitely not their first run, but I mean, uh, it's a, it's a, it's an extremely strong submission. So let's just let's that, just the, say it, right? Yeah. It's the funny part is the uh, the team AU was using the SOC Force Add-in Two Edition, while yeah. uh, the Gigabyte team is using the SOC Force, the regular one. Yeah. The main reason be behind that was uh, I, uh, I would have said I profile. Why do I say I profile? Uh, Dino's Dino was actually um, was actually uh, saying that the SOC force have the the latest update for the BIOS okay. that is better on the uh, Samsung's memory chip, uh, as the the memory stick that the guys are using today are based on Samsung memory chip. Uh, right. It's much better to tweak, and okay. they can get more performances out of that. So maybe they will reach higher frequency for the bench with the SOC Force LN2, yeah. but maybe not as efficient as the SOC Force. So well, that may be the reason why Ikuki and Sophos uh, went for that board. Yeah, well, I guess, and also maybe, um, you know, um, they, they call and say it's Team AU versus Team HQ, right? So those guys maybe you just want to see it with the same kids. Very similar CPUs, and now you can clearly see well, the difference between each of those mm -hmm. two boards. And it's quite obvious that at least for, for SuperPi, like, the mm -hmm. SOC force is still like a... They both are very, very strong boards to, to run this. So. Yeah. Uh, so far, the team were using different kind of, uh, of hardware. I know that uh, John Aninan BR from Brazil was uh, actually changing the... That was actually quite funny because he had the, the MSI box of the, uh, the M, of the Empower, the Z97 Empower Max AC mainboard he was using. And he says, <laughs> and you have the, the Giga by Z97 X SOC Force mainboard on top of that. So Why? that's like... The, they are the, free to use the board they want. Yeah, they are free this to use their the own board, board and uh, anything they, uh, they they want to, to do for that. That's quite interesting. It makes sense to try all your different um, all your different possibilities and and actually being prepared for such a contest where you have the right to use different hardware. It is it is important to come not and have a, not look at what other options you could have and having like two different motherboards or three different motherboards. Why not heck trying out different chipsets? You never know, right? It's yeah, you, you, we will see in the in the, in the near future what uh, what the kind of uh, competition can have and uh, what kind of hardware we can stack our actions. But this year was mainly like, well, Intel and the memory manufacturer sponsoring like uh, the, the competitions, so you can bring your own mainboard and your own. And I really uh, like that. I love that. I think it's it, it's less locked. It's 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 a bit more open. It, it, it is more open, but it's not just that. In terms of of, of compet um, competitivity from each team, there's this because you have this openness. You have also this choice of of strategizing more, of, of doing different things. You know, maybe for that benchmark, you know, this bench this board is going to be better. For the other benchmark, it's going to be that one. But if you can prepare before and have different profiles or different completely differently sets and tweak systems on the on mm -hmm. different boards, then it can actually be uh, to the advantage of the other You can topics. choose the best pick for each benchmark and stuff like this. And if the, the biggest issue is you have to, to get used to this board, yeah, all of yeah, them, right. and to all of these kind of, uh, all of these settings. That's why right. you just have to not confuse yourself with the different namings and all that stuff. But then those guys overclock every day almost, so they, they, they don't really have that kind of issue. Yeah, that's well, true. Well, most of them. Most of them, most of them don't of, have this kind of, of issue. Them, yes. So we are uh, an hour, uh, less than one hour and ten minutes left in this competitions to award 10,000 uh, 10, USD in total cash prize. So far, uh, Team Gigabyte is in the lead of the total total cash they can win uh, with forty five hundred dollars. The second team is Team AU, following them closely with thirty two. 
150 dollar yeah. uh, then team china gonna get 1000 you see you see yuki pro that is actually eight pack uh, is actually winning 750 dollar but he's uh, about mm. he hasn't submitted the score yeah we'll maybe think, update that a bit later still running, uh, He's in the bias right now. I, I'm not. I'm not sure what benchmark. I don't think he's. I don't think he's actually switched to XTU or memory yet. He's still. Uh, he's still benching Super Pi. Well, he's still benching Super Pi, but he probably because now you know Gigabyte and Team You have actually. Actually, scores, Gigabyte right? and Team U are the only team that have submit all their new benchmark. Score. This is why they're actually at the top of the ranking right now. <laughs> so there's a new score coming. This score is from APAC. No oh. formal move. It is a secret, guys. So tune into the, the HWBot Esports or into the HWBot Competition page and refresh the page many, many times. <laughs> yeah, but if you have to wait 50 seconds, you always want to update it right now. <laughs> yeah, I like actually the scoreboard. It's pretty cool. It's a, it's very nice to see all the different scores and what's going on. All that kind of stuff. Actually, we also have to repair a webcam because now it's it's broken. It's, it's yeah, we, we, we had like one of the web, webcam that uh, actually fall down the, the the place it was because they yeah, they made some changes to the venue without like. But it's okay. We are it's fine. We are strong. We are going to survive. <laughs> we broke one the webcam. No, it's okay. We can see the one on one. Everything is okay. Why? Well, <laughs> weather is not okay, but it's it, fine. Yeah. Terrible weather. So far, if you guys need some information on some special team, don't hesitate to ask us below or on the side. Uh, actually, I think it's on the side. Depends where you're watching. It's below on HW, but it's on the side, side on, on Twitch. Twitch. And it's uh, below on uh, OCTV so Just also. figure out where the chat is. Well, find the chat somewhere around here, 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 here. And let us know if you want uh, some special information about the, uh, yeah. the, the teams. The new score is up. And not it yet, drum not roll. Yet. Not yet. Can you hear the rolling? And I have no more air. Man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Wait for it. And it is and it's Team okay. AU with 4 minutes 47 seconds. Hey, that's one quite an improvement from the last one. They were running at 4.55 and now it's 4.47. It's so good. they jump back in the first... So it is It is, it, it is. Team AU versus Team HQ, definitely. I mean, like this <laughs> This is totally... That, that's the race of this contest, right? It's like, okay, like, you do this, bam, I do that, bam, what can you do? Can you do more, huh? <laughs> That, that's quite interesting to see, yeah. yeah that will awesome. be funny because they will be overclicking um, again this weekend, so they might be oh, pushing yeah, yeah, yeah. again yeah, even more than that. Yeah. Those guys are probably co going to go, come to, uh, to the HW, but then they're actually the same board, same setup, and then they're just going to continue. They don't have the time to, to make it more today, right? So okay. let's have a look at the bench, uh, the screenshot. 6.5? And they are now benching at 6.5 GHz with the 4770K CPU, the Aswell one. Well done, well done. The memory is at the 1460, oh, I, can't, I can't see it from here. Timings are, yeah, the, the memory is like 1400 MHz, uh, the, the latency are 9, 12, 12, 21 at 1 T. So this is actually um, interesting score. That's yeah. quite a nice boost from uh, what they had uh, just previously. It's quite a nice boost. Uh, apparently, um, the guys from um, from uh, Gigabyte have a new score. I just overheard something about 444. Uh, 444. So this is this is again one second faster. Right? So. We will see. It, it is we'll not see. over yet. Buckle up and be ready for some extreme stuff. Well, guys, we're gonna take a break. Yeah, let's. We will be uh, taking a break here. There is uh, one hour left in these competitions. 
uh, almost like one hour and five minutes left in these competitions. We're gonna take uh, a 10 15 minute yeah. break. We come back for an update about the scores. So far, only Team Gigabyte and, and Team AU got the complete set of benchmarks submitted. So that will be quite um, buzzy in the last few minutes of this, uh, this, this update. It's not a 44. It's not a 44? No, it's not a 44. Is it, is it, is it a 45? 45? <laughs> we have to wait like everyone else. So you guys wait too. We are fixing the webcam and we will be back.
This program deals with themes of an adult nature and is intended for a mature audience.
Will not the government structure collapse in your absence? Our teacher locked us in, and we weren't allowed to do anything until we were told. She just said to stay calm and stuff. We have an accident or something, but there was two kids that uh, were out going to the bathroom, and they came running back and said somebody, two people got shot.
the world, what's the best thing they can say about him? He's funny, he's funny, he's funny. Well, I'm out to prove that Merle is not funny. That's not a nice thing to say. Well, that's what hurts. You love me too much to say it.
Inside this room, all of my dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams. Become dreams.
dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams. back everyone uh, welcome back to the HyperX uh, overclocking tournament the HyperX OC takeover event um, we will cut the live there's 30 mi 30, 26 minutes left in these competitions we will uh, cut the live to change some of the cameras for you to see the perfectly the end of this round so far the best team is the Gigabyte team still in the lead and there is 25 minutes left. So we will be right back, stay, stay tuned in. We're gonna plug some more, uh, some more angles and more cameras. So catch you in uh, less than two minutes now. Enjoy. Enjoy. 